For Iron Butterfly, the mission was simple, to write the rock equivalent of a Lewis and Clark expedition, a song big enough to explore again and again. But for keyboard player Doug Ingle, learning to say the song's name was the hard part. The, uh, the actual title, I found out later, was supposed to be In the Garden of Eden. However, uh, when he sang it to me, uh, it came out in a Gata de Vida. The tune that went to vinyl at 17 minutes and spanned an entire album side refused to be tamed. It kept getting longer and longer and longer as time went on. And it's probably good that we recorded it when we did because before we were finished, it was a good half hour long in our performances. Then, because their album had sold more than a million copies, a phenomenal achievement in its day, a new honor was necessary. Inagata De Vida was actually the first platinum award in the history of uh, recording. With that success, Iron Butterfly began sharing the stage with some of the best bands of their generation. On one night in 1969, Led Zeppelin was their opening act. We were right dead center in the midst of it, and we really didn't even have the slightest clue how really big we were. By 1971, Iron Butterfly, like Acid Rock, was a thing of the past. So where are they now? Yeah. Though the band reformed in 1974, the story really begins somewhere after 77, when bassist Philip Taylor Kramer, or Taylor as his friends called him, went back to school. He went on to uh, finish his education and then went to work at Northrop on guidance systems for the MX missile. From there, he went to um, a former company called TMM. It was there that Taylor had his breakthrough. According to friends, he devised a mathematical formula that would allow matter to travel at a speed faster than light. Stuff he was working on would totally change the way communication today, as we know it, also travel as we know it. The specifics of that discovery, however, would never be known. On February 12, 1995, Taylor Kramer left his home in the Los Angeles suburb of Thousand Oaks and headed to the L.A. airport. Taylor Kramer was at the airport, LAX, picking up a business associate. After waiting for an hour, Taylor left the airport alone. Back on the highway, Taylor called his wife to say he had a tremendous surprise and that he would, quote, see her on the other side. Taylor also called his friend, Ron Bushy. When I listened to my answer machine, the first message on there was, Bush, it's tail, tails. I love you more than life itself. And then he hung up. Finally, Taylor called 911, claiming he was going to commit suicide. Then, he was gone. There were, there's no physical evidence at all. I mean, his car, his, his minivan is missing. I mean, he's missing. There is just, he's, there's no evidence. In the days after his disappearance, a search party of 200 organized by Taylor's family failed to uncover even a single piece of evidence. He's either underground and doing research, or he was killed. Three years after he first disappeared, the whereabouts of Philip Taylor Kramer remain a mystery. In Taylor Kramer's absence, Iron Butterfly continues to brave popular music's ever-changing tides. In 1995, the band re-released their classic album, In a Gara de Vida. In a Gara de Vida. touring the U.S. and Canada, and we have, uh, a year or so ago, we did a two-month, uh, almost two-month run in Europe. Perhaps one day, Philip Taylor Kramer will once again join Iron Butterfly back on stage. Oh, God, yeah.